Yo guys, it's Haunting Lime and welcome to Season 7. So here in the UK, the season actually resets at 9pm. So I was able to get my battles in really quickly, but I made sure to activate my star piece, which will enable me to get 150,000 star Stardust, which is phenomenal because I need that to power up all the Shadow Pokemon that I've recently acquired. And yeah, I thought rather than just showcasing my first battles, I'll go through some my tier listing of the Pokemon that I think are the strongest in this season and from the last season. Not much has changed, you know, you got your Weather Bowlers. And um, because I myself don't have a Defense Deoxys or a Tropius, which I believe are really strong and, you know, really important Pokemon to get you to the higher levels, I decided to showcase some strong teams by other content creators and which I've used myself, I can, I can actually say that you can use yourself, which are semi-budget, but also not too expensive to use, but also really easily accessible. So the first team is by Wergiwerg, uh, Vergiwerg, or how you pronounce it. He's a really good content creator. Um, he came up with a really strong team. I believe it was um, Hypno in the lead with a safe switch of Umbreon. Umbreon having the recent access to Last Resort in the counter event makes it more accessible for a lot of people. For some reason my opponent didn't switch out to Machamp, um, but hey ho, gives me a chance to get a shield off him. So yeah, this team this team is super strong, so it's Hypno Double Dark. So it's the lineup of Hypno in the lead with uh, Thunder Punch covering the Azumarill and Focus Blast, which is really good at one-shotting people. And um, the safe switch is Umbreon because it baits out the Azumarills, it also baits out the Fighters, which your um, Hypno can farm, and then it leaves your Scrafty in the back. Pretty much un what's the word uncontested to finish off the back line and this team is super strong um so overall i played about um so overall today i'll be showcasing 12 unique teams with 36 different unique pokemon so as you can see the chart there has probably a bit more than that but so uh, you can see in that right now this focus blast is going to one shot this lapras and well <laughs> Sorry about that, I almost spoiled it for you. It wasn't actually going to one-shot one, one shot it because it, it's not stab, but it does get it pretty low. So, on to the first win, and it's a really strong team. Um, again, check out Virgi Virgiwerg's channel to see how to play the, the team even more. He used it pretty much all of last season. It is these first five teams I want to showcase are basically legend ranking teams, I'll help you get there. And now I'm going to showcase a team that I used recently myself to hit legend um, again um, once I dropped from the uh, Holiday Cup and stuff, um, generally won the reset before the last season, is Shadow of Snow, which I managed to get a really good one from the Rockin' event, and pairing that up with Azumarill, and the safe switch being Jellicent. So Jellicent actually is available now in the wild, um, the female form especially, so I've seen it around now, so it's not as hard to get or hard to come by. You can utilize this team with regular Bomber Snow, but Shadow Bomber Snow just hits a little bit harder and the team is super solid, it's super tanky, and it's super forgiving. So it's a team I use myself, um, like I mentioned, and it is really good because it basically covers the, um, it covers basically, what was it going to say, Tropius, it covers uh, Gephus, it covers Azumarill, and these obviously, you can see the ST Pokemon at the top. Um, and again, this is my tier listing of Pokemon that I think are really, really strong. And Great League is pretty much all about resources. The more resources you have, the more chances you have of actually being the best to climb to the top. So off to a semi-decent lead. It's neutral damage. Um, well, it's super effective damage. And because of the situation of that, of um, seeing the Golbat switching out into an Umbreon, um, like I said, a lot of Umbreons are out there now because of the accessibility from Kanto event or Kanto Tour event. So it is a really strong team, the first team I mentioned. Um, so if you can get a chance to build it, use it. It's super strong. So I switch out into my Azumarill because Azumarill has a pretty good matchup against uh, Umbreon, especially because I'm running Play Rough. So the team doesn't need um, Ice Beam, it only requires uh, Play Rough and Hydro Pump. Hydro Pump because Bastiodon is a problem um, in the meta. If it goes unchallenged, it can pretty much steamroll most teams because it is such a heavy big wall to kind of get over. So I'm letting a lot of damage go into um, my uh, Zoom roll because I know the um, Golbat in the back will is a poison type. So I don't want to basically give it too much form. It's actually a wing attack one. I thought it was a poison uh, jab one or something or a poison fang one. Um, so I'm gonna go straight for uh, the ice beam because I, I was able to kind of generate enough energy to get there. And uh, my opponent also lets it go through because obviously I've got my Obama snow and he fully farms me down. So here I'm expecting um, some moves. So I know the 
I know Crobat's moveset, uh, but I'm not fully sure of Golbat's. So I'm thinking it's going to be a Sludge Bomb or a Shadow Ball, which is Crobat's moveset. But it's actually a, um, a Poison Fang. So I know I can live re uh, live the second one. Um, and again, this is a team which isn't too expensive, but it does require some resources. Um, but as I said, you can obviously use a regular Obama Snow and uh, Jellicent. So seeing this, um, oh, seeing this uh, 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 Scrafty really upset me because I was like, oh god, this is going to steamroll the rest of my team. So thankfully I was able to get the first, uh, well the first one got uh, shielded, but thankfully the second one didn't get shielded too. Um, so I was able to kind of chip it down. And this is one of the reasons why I run Ice Beam and also um, why Bubble Beam is really, well people expect the Bubble Beam because people will not shield occasionally because they expect the first one. So this is a team populated by Wallower and also Shredi used it in his um, uh, climb to Legend as well. So this is a really strong team, I highly recommend it. And uh, yeah, if you want a strong team for this season and not too expensive, especially if you can get more access to Jellicent's in the wild, Jellicent, sorry, Frillish in the wild, um, then uh, I highly recommend you use it. So these first five teams I want to showcase are teams by content, other content creators. Um, a team I use myself, I won't say I created it myself, came up with it on Reddit, uh, seeing a fellow user's post, and uh, yeah, it got me to, I won't say a legend, but somebody did who watched my video, um, did that, I'll showcase that later. So this is a team um, created by FP Sticks, a uh, really great content creator, again, super strong, always hitting legend, you know, pretty much early on the season, using Golvantula. And the safe switch being uh, Pelipper and pairing that off with Geofisk. So, um, although I'm not going to be using Tropius or De Defense Deoxys, I'm only showcasing a few a few battles with the Azumarill and Geofisk. I'm not a big fan of using it myself because, you know, I hate the mirror match. Um, but they are strong Pokemon. Like I said, S tier Pokemon. You know, it is something I want to use. So, get, use something from S tier, from A tier, and B tier. I would say C and D tier are pretty much the same. Um, I wouldn't even classify them as C tier. They're pretty much. Uh, like just below B, uh, but they're still super strong to make teams. Um, but yeah, my opponent didn't switch out and I was able to generate so much energy and now he comes out with a lick, um, uh, a lick Obstagoon, which I was kind of surprised by. But I was able to kind of uh, get some chip damage down and now because my opponent obviously expended a shield, um, all I have to do is shield this. I don't have to worry about any, any hard hitting moves because it's just Night Slash, but because my opponent is really slow at generating energy with the Licks, not really slow, but slower than it would have been with Counter, um, this lunge was going to go through and pretty much one shot it. So, at the start of um, the uh, the games, um, a lot of the, obviously your level 1, level 2, you're not going to be facing really challenging opponents. So, I left the first um, one and a half, well, two sets out and I started midway through the third set to make my so-called unique team. So using 36 unique Pokemon, using 12 unique teams, um, just to help you guys out. The first like seven, eight teams are really super strong. I recommend the first five, definitely. Um, but the other ones are kind of just building Pokemon together and just seeing what they do. But yeah, um, because my opponent had a Geofisk in the back, just bringing my own Geofisk to just kind of take it out straight away. So this next team is a really popular team created by Caleb Peng, uh, Caleb Peng sorry. Um, he's a really, 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 really good uh, team builder. Like probably one of the best team builders around in the Pokemon Go community and this is a team he utilized in Season 4 and I also utilized it in Season 6 myself, it's a really strong team, um, Shadow, sorry not Shadow, um, um, Alola Marowak is a really strong Pokemon, this is actually a match against a Counter Cup team which, you know, you'd think it'd be like a losing situation but my opponent actually has a Dragonair so I'm being countered fully, so Dragonair in the lead which really wrecks Alola Marowak and then a Clefable in the back to uh, counter my uh, a Shift Re uh, switching, sadly I wasn't able to get um, a second uh, Leaf Lid off because ch Charm animation is just weird, like I thought I'd have enough energy to build up two but it just went through, um, actually two went through which is, which is really really weird. So now I'm going to fully commit to farming this down. Um, nothing the Clefable does can actually harm me. So it's all a matter of just fully farming it down. And I have lots of energy now. And still two shields. So I do expect the Dragonair to come back in because it is the best matchup. So this team itself isn't too expensive. Um, you can run Shadowborn. Shadowborn is probably the recommended moveset by uh, Caleb Peng. But I, that, you know, I, I somehow missed the uh, Marowak, Marowak raid day. And I missed out on uh, Shadowborn. So... It's my own fault, uh, but it's really a strong move. Thankfully, I've got this uh, Ferrothorn. Ferrothorn can really handle the Wigglytuff in the back. Wigglytuff would have been a problem for you for both my, um, for basically uh, both my Shiftry and the Alola Marowak. But uh, this Ferrothorn um, um, uh, just gets energy so quickly and it hits super hard. So this team has a weakness to. Um, 
uh, a little Marowak as well. But thankfully, you can actually utilize the whole team to, to super effectively and uh, kind of get the win. So, this Dragonair is going to start chipping away with its uh, Aqua Tails, but also its um, Dragon Breath. So, I have to get this off. And um, yeah, this team, this, this team itself, like I've, I've used all these the first five teams myself personally, so I can highly recommend them for people. It's the start of the season, not everybody knows what team to use, and because Great League has such a vast pool of Pokemon, it can actually be really confusing. And because um, the start of the season, not everyone's you know chasing the best team or looking for uh, you know the the, uh, like the the fully meta team. They want a consistent team they can use. So all these teams are really consistent. But also, you know, I'd say highly meta. So. You're going to see me wasting all my charge TMs. I had about seven on uh, trying to change this uh, Alola Ninetales to have uh, uh, Psyshock. Um, but yeah, it's going to go to a waste. So not great. Not a great use of uh, Elite, not Elite charge TMs, just charge TMs. I, I hate the system at the moment. It's just so bad. And I wasted like six before the uh, Rocket event came out as well. So this is one of those Pokemon that I really just despise because it doesn't get the moveset. So this is a team that um, I would say is pretty budget. Um, it can be utilized really effectively and it's super strong. It helped me get to expert at least and I know one of my um, watchers or viewers actually was able to get to uh, a legend actually with his team. So the team consists of Obstagoon in the lead with double charmers and the charm difference being here instead of using Wigglytuff or Clefable using Whimsicott. Whimsicott has a really good um, meta breakdown because it's really good against Chewfisk and it's super well, well it does super well against uh, Azumarill due to its um, grass typing and uh, had a pretty good lead. My opponent switches into a Scrafty which obviously is going to get demolished by this Whimsicott. Um, the um, the grass typing itself also takes uh, like resistant damage. Well, grass not itself, but uh, the fairy takes resistant damage from counters, whereas the Alola Nanfil will take neutral damage from the counters. So I don't have to worry about anything. I did think this is going to be um, a flame charge, but it wasn't, and I'm able to get to my grass knot. So here I'm going to shield because I know if I uh, throw a charge move, my opponent will shield too. And because my opponent is just displaying surfs, I don't have to worry about it as well. So, had a pretty phenomenal lead by going in with my Obstagoon. And Charm is so like devastating that you know I can just come in now and fully farm down this um, Mew as well if I wanted to. So, most likely, it might have um, um, a Wild Shard and Surf, but he just threw the Surf and I switch out straight into my. Um, Lola Nine Tails. So this is where Psyshock would have been a great uh, utilization, but uh, yeah, it's Fairy. Fairy doesn't resist Fairy, so this player off is gonna hurt quite a bit. But a Lola Nine Tails is fairly tanky, and the Charm just does so much damage. This is like quite a degenerate team. It's a, a double Charm lineup, which you know a lot of people won't like, but it is strong. It, it is what works, and it's also not too expensive to use. Um, all the resources are out there, and uh, a lot of people can actually invest in these Pokemon quite easily and uh, do well with it. So, I'm um, able to take out the Azumarill, even using uh, Weather Ball. So these Weather Ball teams are really strong this season, they were strong last season as well. So if you can utilize them, just use, utilize them. So, them are the first five teams. Guys, also, I forgot to mention, thank you so much for the ongoing support. Um, to all my subscribers that have subscribed to me in the first season, it's uh, an honor. Thank I, honestly, I didn't think I'd get to even like half the amount of subscribers in the first season. So thank you all for watching. And also, I'm going to try and upload daily content now. Um, I do want this season uh, seven to be the best season I can and just grow my content, you know, uh, as much as possible and just put myself out there and obviously grow the channel and uh, just produce quality content for you guys. So this first video is going live hopefully today to help out all the people that are struggling to find a team and uh, hopefully this can help, you know, you can utilize what the st strongest Pokemon are in the, in the meta and you can build a team around that as well. So there are obviously tools like um, uh, so obviously put, uh, tools online you can use as well but uh, you know you have a lot of content creators showcasing teams and obviously all the teams I showcased initially were by other content creators so this is a team um, utilizing I think another Wallowers team um, or just a mixture of Wallowers team or a mixture of different teams so Bastidon is a really strong Pokemon in the meta because it just walls everything its counters are there but if you can utilize um, or if you can just you know, make your backline counter the counters it pretty much just demos or everything or should I say uh, smackdowns everything and because my opponent actually started off with a drift blame on t and and he has um, 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 <laughs> he has a Galvantula in the back my um, 
Bastard on his whip pace is basically going to smack down them both. Nothing they throw apart from the Shadow Ball can actually do damage to me. Um, it will chip away, but Bastard on such a big fat shield <laughs> that if, even if you're throwing like super effective moves apart from like Earthquake, um, it does take quite a bit of time to take it out. So, you know, my opponent for some reason is going for the Icy Winds. He just wants to debuff me completely, um, but it's not going to make a difference because Smackdown is still going to chip away and also Stone Edge is going to be super effective. He should have really gone for um, double Shadow Ball here instead because now I'm able to get to uh, the Stone Edge and maybe if he went for double Shadow Ball, I would have been able to uh, not take it out because he uses the shield here as well. So he uses Bolt Shield, so I switch out immediately. Knowing that my opponent can't actually throw anything yet, so he's not next to the Shadow Ball to fully take out this uh, Drifflim. Drifflim, an amazing Pokemon, and because I'm so ahead in energy, I'm going to return this Clavantula. So return is pretty amazing. Um, Sableye is really good, it's one of those pivotal um, safe switch. So Defense Deoxys is a really strong safe switch. Um, so is Medicham, so is Sableye. I say Sableye is quite meta defining. Um, really strong if you have a purified one and uh, you know, it's pretty good. So this is a team I just kind of came up with on the spot. It's utilizing a really strong Pokemon, Shadow Swampert and uh, Skarmory. This is a really strong core, which is used by many different teams. It's like a, it's like a Skarmory Wish Cash Core, um, but in this case, I'm actually using a double flyer uh, ABB strat. So, what do double flyers resist the most? Well, takes the protective damage from the most is electric types. So, having the um, lead being uh, Swampert, I can actually have a good lead against this uh, obstacle in here and then switch out into my one of my flyers to bait out the uh, Galvantula, and then I can fully commit to the farm down or you know basically found as much as possible with the um, Shadow Swamper. So I get an amazing catch here, uh, which is pretty good because, you know, my opponent's going to waste all that energy from Night Slash, which is resisted, and he actually gets the boost, which isn't great. Um, but, you know, this this thick wall here is... Um, uh, is super super strong uh, mandibus this is one of the reason recent pokemon i've built and uh, yeah i invested a bit of uh, rare candies into it but you know what it's worth it because this is just a big flying wall a big flying umbreon as they say and uh, yeah my opponent actually it also baits out the um the stun fist so that's one of the reasons having the um the double flyer strat actually you know brings out the the anti-flyer and you can actually do so much damage or so much farm with your swampert so i'm gonna let my um mandibus go for some reason even that rock slide didn't ko so which is just shows how thick that pokemon is so now i'm gonna farm as much as possible um i'm gonna commit the shield because i don't want it to be an earthquake and rock slide is gonna chip away so i'm farming again as much as possible knowing my opponent um, will try and get to the next rock slide um i can thankfully uh, outpace my opponent but obviously he has no shields that's one of the reasons why i will farm because i wanted to get to the second hydro pump hydro pump hydro cannon um and this will take out the uh, the opposing uh, opposing obstagoon and you'll see the swamp but is basically completely completely obliterating this whole team so because my swamp was still fairly healthy i'm able to get to this uh, sludge wave and now i'll just bring in my uh, my uh, scar reach kind of just clean up um i am going to try and brave the brave bed this uh, azumarill but i'm uh, going to farm it down so my opponent obviously realizes nothing you can do and he backs out so this is a, quite a strong team um i have tried to obviously utilize the swamp slash uh, Skarmory core quite a bit uh, not to my best effect but that was quite good so it might be a team I revisit myself so these last few teams are pretty much um, the strong teams um, these are more like budget oriented or basically different uh, not top uh, not using utilizing the top S tier or maybe most of eight A tier Pokemon um, but it is again a really strong team i want to use this uh, shadow venus so it's off to a bad lead but uh, having the uh, drift blame safe swap is actually really good because it brings out um, anything that uh, you don't really want to see but because it has icy wind it can debuff a lot of things and my opponent actually thought i was gonna go for icy wind here which most do think that and having the shadow ball actually helps out a lot so now that i won back switch i can just farm down this i maybe didn't have to even do that thinking it's going to be a nice punch but it's fair enough i want to keep my uh, my drift from healthy and now i'm gonna debuff this uh, skarmory before i can get to the sky attack which means now i'd have to even shield the sky attack um drift from itself is 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 very tanky um it can take a lot of damage and you know it has a lot of health not the most highest in defense but uh, definitely good definitely good at uh, baiting shields and now i know my opponent's most likely going to shield my shadow ball bait so 
and throwing the Icewind to double debuff my opponent. So now I know my opponent can't do much, and he actually brings out his Venusaur. I could have stayed in. Um, the whole reason why I swap out into my own Venusaur is because my Venusaur is pretty much useless against the Skarmory. Not that useless, but it is pretty bad against it. So I just have to give my opponent a second shield with the Sludge Bomb, which most likely it will get. Um, and then I, you can farm me down, it's fine. I've still got my uh, Altari in the back. Altari is, is really strong. Um, it's one of those things that if your team hasn't got a check for it, it can really steamroll pretty much most teams. But Azumarill being you know, one of the meta-defining Pokemon as well as uh, G-Fisk, it doesn't always see the best play. So having Pokemon that cover those or draws them out is always really good. So having uh, the uh, Drifblim draw out the uh, G-Fisk and then farming down with the um, Venusaur is really strong. And then obviously my opponent had whatever it had, I can just pretty much farm down. So um, I know my opponent doesn't have any energy to build up to a Sky Attack yet, so I'm building up to two Sky Attacks because I don't want to take too much damage. And if my opponent does have a charge move, I know I can tank uh, a Sludge Bomb. And because Sky Attack doesn't do that much damage against the Skarmory, Skarmory is thick. Um, uh, having the two actually helps me just take it out, and now I don't have to worry about anything from this Venusaur, which even you know I, I, the Dragon Blade takes it anyway. So another strong team you can utilize. You don't have to use Shadow um, Shadow Venusaur. It's just one of the recent uh, Shadow Pokemon that I've built, and I just wanted to use the team. And again, these teams are just small showcases of strong Pokemon. Like all these Pokemon in the tier list are super, super, super strong. Um, like any Pokemon from like B and D, you can combine with A and B or S, you make a solid team. So there's a vast you know, variety of teams you can actually make here. I'm just showcasing 12 teams. Uh, five teams made by the content creators that are super strong to get legend, and the rest are kind of just like put together to just showcase you know, some unique uh, Pokemon and their attributes, and also for me to try out some different teams. Because it's, it's the start of the season. It's, um, it's one of the seasons where everyone's not highly ranked yet, and uh, you, know, you might face against some uh, people doing the same thing, playing fun teams and uh, you know you don't have to be super sweaty yet uh, here off to a pretty semi-decent lead um, this is again another Kanto Cup team so having the um, rig stuff in the front isn't that great because it charmed just a lot of damage body slams do actually build up quite well but because I've got uh, the OG Stunfisk here I'm able to farm it down and my opponent actually comes out with um, an Electrode which isn't going to be isn't going to be doing too well against my uh, um, my Stunfisk because I can get to obviously the Mud Bombs are going to be super effective and here I'm wondering what's going to be in the back most likely uh, a double charm double charm team um, so I'm like shit I've got Shadow Machamp he's going to get absolutely uh, bold <laughs> he's going to get absolutely destroyed here so I'm um, Farming as much as possible before I, I take it out. But actually, the Charizard on the back, um, so now it's basically GG. Um, all I have to do is get to the Rock Slide. I've got a Shield, and yeah, even if it's Charizard in the Ultra League, it can't survive a Rock Slide. It's just, just too damaging. Um, so this will take it out. So well played to my opponent. Um, you know, again, Shadow, Shadow Machamp is a really strong Pokemon in in this league. Uh, I won't say it's like the best, but it is really strong. And now to showcase my last team that I've built, um, utilizing um, second last actually, uh, Meganium with Registeel and Whiskash. So Meganium is super weak to flyers, and uh, having the Registeel is really good because it's it's like an anti flyer, and also the Whiskash is pretty good against flyers too. So um, my I actually get a really strong positive lead with uh, the Politoed. Uh, Politoed is everywhere in the meta at the moment because it is super strong it's basically a weather ball meta here i go for the uh, frenzy plant because my opponent switched in pretty late um so he's expecting an earthquake and i need a shield because more sweet tribbles uh, shield especially shadow weak tribbles so i just have to bring in my registeel now because it, it's going to be doing um res resisted damage onto my registeel and i want to realign my uh, meganium with uh, uh, the polytoad meganium again another strong pokemon um in the Great League. It's just super tanky. It has obviously good counters. There's quite a lot of flyers. Tropius counters it pretty pretty heavily, but having a uh, lowest line lineup isn't gonna be that great against Tropius. But you normally see Tropius in the lead. If it is Tropius, you know, you just gotta sacrifice your Meganium. But having, if it's Air Slash Tropius, you have a bit more play because then your Whiskash can actually come in with Blizzard and do quite a bit of damage. So I'm able to take out my opponent's Pokemon and he brings out the Polytoad. I know he can't farm me down. Mud Shots do obviously do quite a bit of damage, but Polytoad isn't highly attack weighted, so he has to throw energy, and because of that, I know I'm able to get to a Frenzy Plant before he gets to either a Blizzard, which is fine. If he shields, I know he's got Blizzard, uh, which he doesn't, thankfully, and my awesome opponent's are out of shields anyway. So in this case, you know, I just have to align my uh, 
my back line with the Whiskash. Whiskash, it has a very neutral matchup with the Zoom Rule and it is really well against uh, G Fisk and obviously having the Ganium as well. Um, yeah, again, this is just a team I came up with, pretty solid. Um, really budget team as well, apart from the Registeel. Uh, you can also utilize anything else. You can probably use the G Fisk in place of the Registeel um, to give it some more uh, coverage. Uh, G Fisk itself is stronger than Registeel in, in the season just because it hits harder and it gets the moves pretty fast um, but no it's a really strong team and again apart from the ready steel the rest of the team is fairly budget uh, and now for the last team showcase utilizing toxic Pro one of my favorite pokemon in the leagues um, and pairing that up with haunter so this is probably this is a really bad team um, but i wanted to make a, a final unique team thinking okay which pokemon haven't i used from the the list um, and uh, yeah it was harder than i imagined <laughs> you know coming up with their uh, different teams and uh, as you can see a lot of these are wins so how the sets played out basically the first set i did i recorded was a venusaur team that i was just messing around with uh went 5-0 obviously it's the first pretty much first battles of the season um second set i was trying out the same team and went 2-3 um made quite a few misplays but also you know i wasn't playing that that well um for some reason my opponent didn't shield that mud bomb that mud bomb if you shielded it, I didn't think it would take it out myself. I was surprised, but it did take it out, which basically made him lose the game. I was pretty much going to be able to like, gonna get taken out or farmed down by the Gengar. So it wasn't great, but uh, he comes out with his uh, Charizard, which obviously is going to take quite a lot of damage from these this, this Hunter, the Shadow Claw. Uh, Shadow Claw, it, Hunter is super highly attack weighted, and because I know I'm able to get bolt shields from this Charizard, I can just whittle down this as much as possible before you know he throws energy, which is fine because now I can just come in and farm it down completely. So my opponent throws, and now my Lapras is, is just going to come up and clean up this. Uh, this Charizard, because this guy actually had a double uh, star team, and because I'm ahead on energy, um, and also I resist the Hydro Cannons, even if my opponent throws a Skull Bash, it's not going to do much. I'm going to shield this because it's going to be the, the first move to hit me, and I want to keep as much health as possible, and this um, Skull Bash is going to just boost up my um, defenses, and now all I have to do is get to a Surf. I still have um, a Toxic Rock in the back, and the Surf is going to take it out. So guys, that's my uh, first video of the season. Uh, many more to come, and thank you for all the support you've given me. This has been 12 unique teams by 36 unique Pokemon. Hope you guys have enjoyed, and if you do like, please subscribe. Okay, I might have been wrong about that one. Um, this is my last team. This is my last team using Gengar <laughs> and uh, Surf Etched. So, yeah. This is the last game, um, utilizing Mew. Mew is a switch army knife. Um, it can learn pretty much any move, um, and it's super strong. So off to a really, really bad lead. Um, this team is it's probably not great. I just realized my biggest flaw in this team is it's going to get heavily destroyed by Obstagoon. So I come in here with my Surf Fetched. You know, not the best play here, but you know, I thought, okay, I can get a few counters in and whittle it down. So when I do come back in with Mew, I can surf it down. But thankfully, he stayed in. Um, and yeah, counters just destroy Obstagoon. And because he comes in with the uh, Breloom, um, Breloom, is it Breloom? Um, it's a really cool Pokemon, uh, but super, super squishy. It's like a, it's like a bigger glass cannon than uh, Surf Fetched is. So his counters are doing quite a bit, and he's able to obviously use. I, I've got Bolt Skills out of him, and he's utilized. He's just you know, gain loads, loads of energy, and even though I don't have the best um, damaging moves for this, I'm going to take the first move, it's a sludge bomb, which doesn't do too much because I was of the psychic typing, and now, I could have thrown a surf, um, but I decided not to, I knew I could farm it down, and I switched out here to get some farm on my Gengar, and the back is a shot, an old Marowak, which this Gengar loves to see. Um, yeah, Marowak is pretty awesome, but uh, it hits uh, you know, any any ghost types. Because I don't have Shadow Ball on this uh, Gengar, I um, just have to just go for the, uh, the Shadow Punches. So that will take it out. It's a pretty quick game there, guys. Um, decent team, you know, utilizing against some strong Pokemon, but this is more from like D and C or D tier, which is pretty much the same tier. So guys, thank you for watching. If you have liked what you've seen, please subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Take care.